it's pop quiz time. So I'm going to show you guys two pictures, and one is going to be from the zoo, and one is going to be from the wild. I want you guys to tell me which one you think is from the zoo, and which one you think is from the wild. So which one do we think this is from? Zoo. Okay. Yeah. The zoo. Oh, no, that one's the zoo. Okay. Oh, so I don't know. This is actually a trick quiz. They were both from the zoo. <laughs> oh, oh you're right. Okay. But I want to show you these because, as you can see, one looks more natural, one looks more like the wild, and one looks more like a captive place for an animal. So how many of you have been to the zoo? Okay. How many of you think zoos are good? How many of you think zoos are bad? Okay. So, today we're going to be talking about why zoos are good. According to Zoos of America, it has been estimated by Waza that over 600 million people visit zoos each year. But why do we have zoos in the first place? According to National Geographic, the first zoos were created as private collections by the wealthy to show their power. These private collections were called menageries. Wall carvings from Egypt and Mesopotamia are evidence that rulers and aristocrats created menageries as early as 2500 BCE. So originally, zoos were created as power for the wealthy, but now zoos are more about the animals. Zoos are negatively looked at because of their small enclosures. But despite what you may think, Zoos make sure that their animals get the best health requirements. A lot of health zoos will um, hire ve sorry, veterinarians as their own like personal veterinarians to come work for them. Um, they make sure they get the right amount of diets for their needs. They don't just give them like random foods. They make sure that they have all the right kind of food. They have lots of time to exercise and play. And they also, in the many enclosures in zoos, will have a dark area for the pet, well, the animals to go in and rest if they don't want to be out with the people. Zoos also help with endangered animals. According to newzoo.org, a proven track record of 30 plus species, including the American bison and California condor, have been brought back from the brink of extinction. Because of work, of accredited zoos and aquariums. If zoos weren't around, these animals would no longer be alive today. So if you think about it, that's a lot of animals that the zoo has helped. Zoos also will have animals come in from the wild that need rehabilitation from if they got injured or if they were being hunted and someone shot them. According to Animal Medical Center of Marquette, Zoos and aquariums also often rehabilitate injured animals and then release them back into the wild. This may apply to anything from seals, eagles, to red wolves. Zoos often work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in this area. So what can we do to help these endangered animals like the zoo is doing? You can donate to help endangered animals through the Association of Zoos and Aquariums who provide accreditation to more than 235 zoos and aquariums that meet the highest standards for animal welfare and work relentlessly to protect wildlife and wild places. By supporting AZA, you will support the leaders in the care and conservation of animals. So zoos make sure they hire the best people for these animals a lot of people have to go to college. Zoos require a lot of people to go to college to become zookeepers. And next time you go to the zoo, make sure to think about all the good the zoo has done for the animals.